Hey folks, this is Brian from Super Easy Toots, and in this tutorial I'm going to cover the uh, set width manipulator. Uh, basically, a set width manipulator allows us to set the field width for the next insertion operation. Now, in order to use this uh, manipulator, we must uh, do a pound include, and the file name is iomanip. And if we remember back to what we've previously been doing, we've previously been using a pound include iostream, which is obviously a file, um, and this pound include iomanip gives us access to the items located in this iomanip file. And then using namespace will also apply to this file, giving us um, the ability to use the standard declarations of the items in this file. So, in order to use uh, the set width, we basically, the text is typed out, S-E-T-W, and then in parentheses we put a size. Now the size must be an integer value, and it's only valid for the variable that follows it. So if I, what I've, what I've done here, in the Quincy side here, I've created two integer variables, named them T Brady and D Breeze, and I've set them equal to basically their touchdown passes last year from Brady and Breeze, 36 and 33. And what I'm going to do here is just a simple C out statement that has uh, T Brady, the variable named T Brady, so it's going to print 36. And when I debug and run this, we're going to see that that 36 is all the way to the left. Now we want to create a different field width. I'm going to call it kind of a text box. I think it's a little easier to understand. Um, but that's basically what I, what I mean is field width. Uh, so now if we use this, uh, we can use this manipulator. And what I've done here is I've done a simple C out statement and I've used this uh, set width of three. So that's going to create a field width of three, a text box, so to speak, with three spaces in it. And T, T Brady is the um, variable name, so the value of 3, 6 is going to be put in that field width, in that little text box, so to speak. So I debug and run it, and there we have the 3, 6. So basically this is our little field width, our text box with three spaces, and then 3, 6 is it's going to be uh, over to the right. That's just the default of it. We'll learn how to manipulate it to the left a little bit later on in later tutorials. So again, if you think about this as being three spaces wide when we do the set width, we have the empty space here, then the three and the six. Now if we do a set width of ten, it's going to create a field width or a little text box, so to speak, ten spaces wide, and then the three six is going to be in, in uh, space nine and space ten. So I'm going to uncomment this, and we're going to run it with space ten. And just to prove this, I'm also going to show you what I've done here is I've done a simple C out statement with the first ten letters in the alphabet. So that's going to give us the ten spaces. So if we run this with the set width of ten, we see that we have our three six in our in our ninth slot and in our uh, tenth slot. So now when you have two things that follow the set width, the set width will only apply to the first variable. So here I've got a simple C out statement with a set width 10, T Brady, D Breeze, and basically this set width of 10 is only going to apply to the T Brady variable. So we're going to get something that looks like this, a box that has eight empty spaces, and then um, and then three six would be in the ninth and tenth slot, but the set width again of 10 is not going to apply to the to the debreeze variable. So if I debug and run this, and there we have the 36, which is in spot 9 and 10, and then the 33 follows. So the set width again, like I said, did not apply to it. Now to get the set width to apply to the second variable, you're going to have to retype in that set width. So now I've got a set width of 10 that's going to apply to this variable and a set width of 10 that's going to apply to this variable. So we're going to get something that's going to be an output like this. We have something that's 10 spaces wide. And we have this little imaginary line. And then our second field width, our second little text box, and we're going to see the 3, 3 appear over here from the debreeze variable. So I'm going to debug and run this. 
And sure enough, there it is. We have the 3-6 applying to the first little text box, 10 spaces wide, and then the, um, the set width that we applied uh, uh, for the second one, for the debreeze variable, is also shown up there. Um, this also can apply to floats. However, float has basically a kind of a default precision of six digits. So I've created a float named interest rate and given it seven digits. It's only going to print out the first six digits by default of, uh, of the precision of it. And I've done the set width of three here to show you that it doesn't matter in this case. The set width of three will, will not overwrite the fact that this has a set per, uh, a precision default of six digits. So I'm going to debug and run this. And we're going to see even with the set width of three here, we still have the six digits being printed out. So again, the uh, precision of this being six digits has overridden the fact of the set width of three. But again, the set uh, the set W will apply. We can make it apply to uh, float variables as well. I've got a set width of ten here. I'm going to apply it to um, to the interest rate, and you're going to see when I run this that we're going to have the empty space in the front of that interest rate and you can see there we've got the we've got the space there um, this also is the same thing with uh, with variables that follow again even a float followed by an int I've, what I've done here is to show you again uh, that the, the default precision of the float being six digits will overwrite this set with a three and then the T Brady is going to uh, hug that so to speak the T Brady variable of three six is going to hug that and follow right behind it so I'll debug and run this and you can see here uh, the set width has basically been kind of thrown to the side we've got the six digits the last digit of that being seven and then the three six from the T Brady and we can apply this also to strings so uh, here I've created a string of uh, a, a string and I've named it dad and I've set it equal to the text of father f-a-t-h-e-r and this is six digits wide and I'm going to show you again that even with strings the the fact that this is six um, uh, six characters wide will overwrite this set width of four so I debug and run And here we have this first father is just the simple C out of the uh, string variable. And then even with the set width, we get the same response. The, um, the fact that this is six characters wide has overridden the fact of the set width of four. And then last, even if we have this manipulator in there with a set width of four, we know that the um, that the dad string variable is going to overwrite it, and the uh, the set width is still not going to apply to the second variable, uh, even though it's in um, even though it's not applying to the first. So debug and run it, and then we have the father. So again, the set width has been overridden. So set width uh, set width is important uh, when you're doing tables and you want to um, uh, set the field width for items in the in the top of the table or at the top of the columns and whatnot so it's an important part as far as uh, formatting uh, formatting tables and in, in, in text and whatnot and you'll, you'll use it quite a bit